Gina DeLuca here. All right, today I'm going to be doing another In the Flower series. This is going to be a straight pour through this nifty contraption, which you can get from the paintpourstore.com. Uh, if you use the coupon code GINA15, you will get 15% off this and anything else that you purchase from the website. Um, I'm also a deco art affiliate, so do check out the affiliate links in the description box below for coupon codes and, uh, and I receive a commission at no additional cost to you. Uh, so check that out. Also, let's see, I have uh, this little piggy pigment in there. I'm also uh, associated with them. So do check out the description box for that info. The colors we are using today for my background slash base coat, I have Amsterdam in greenish blue, Liquitex Basics Thalo Blue, Thalo Green. So that is these two colors, Thalo Green and Thalo Blue, but they have been mixed with the DecoArt Americana Decor Scent Enamels in pure white. So it is 50% Scent Enamel, 50% Liquitex Basics color, whatever it is. And then I add the Floetrol to that. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, this color here is the uh, this little piggy in abalone. Love this color. And I have DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in pearl. The This little piggy has been mixed um, just a, enough of the Josonia gloss varnish to cover the bottom of the cup. I add the pigment and then I added some Floetrol. The rest of the paints are mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. You can go up to three parts Floetrol. That's fine too. Um, I'm probably somewhere between two and two and a half parts. I don't measure. I eyeball. But uh, that would be the least I would go. One part paint to two parts Floetrol. Some paints have a higher pigment load and can take more Floetrol. Um, some of the less expensive paints, uh, the craft paints, sometimes that's only one to one because it's already so much water. But the basics, they can certainly take uh, three times for sure. If you're using golden, you could really, I mean, you could do like nine parts Floetrol, the golden. <laughs> The golden uh, heavy bodied is so pigmented. You only need a tiny bit. Anywho, so one part paint, two parts Floetrol, then that mixture is thinned until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it's disappearing quickly. It is making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. If it is getting thick and then thin and thick and thin, that means that your consistency is inconsistent and you need to keep on mixing. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint, brand, color, consistency, the recipe, of course, the technique, all of the things that I can't fit onto a card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box contains a tip for this particular technique, and here at the bottom you have the color palette that was used in this painting. These two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two-color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use some of the colors, all of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my cup. I'm doing about two ounces in this cup. This is a 14 by 14 canvas. I am going to lay down a base coat and I'm going to try to reserve some of this paint for future purposes. Don't need a whole lot, but I do want to keep some. There it is. Uh, 
so the reason I lay down the base coat. First of all, you'll notice my edges are already covered. The way that I mix for a straight pour is pretty thin and I'm using Floetrol. That combination does not offer the greatest coverage on the side of the canvas. It can appear thin and the colors, uh, basically the canvas will show through and then I feel compelled to go back and fix it. So by covering the edges of my canvas first with the color that is going to become my base coat slash background, I am eliminating that as a potential issue. I like to troubleshoot before there's trouble. This is also why I like to lay down a base coat. Uh, when you put your puddle on the canvas, something has to stick to the canvas first. If it is not a base coat, it is going to be your puddle and it's going to be the edges of the puddle when you are stretching the edges of your puddle will stick to the canvas and the rest of the puddle is going to roll over top of those edges some of the coolest things that happen especially on a straight pour can happen on the edge of your puddle and if you don't have a base coat, you might lose that. You lose the option of keeping that. I like to keep as many options open as possible when it comes to my paint pouring. Sometimes I might opt for negative space and laying a base coat down first offers me that. I like to use for my base coat the same color that I'm using as the background for my straight pour. The reason for this is there are bubbles in your base coat. I'm popping them now. If I don't get them all, they can pop up through the pour and they bring paint with it. This is not a terrible thing. This is partially how we get cells using the DecoArt paints. I'm going to put some paint in a cup. The DecoArt paints are matte when they dry, and so they have a hydrophobic effect. They push the other paint away, the glossier paint. They push it, those paints away and give you cells. So when those little tiny bubbles pop up and they have some of that deco art paint in it, then that comes to the top. Because it's a hydrophobic effect, it pushes the paint away. Those cells get bigger. And then we stretch them out and make them even bigger. All right, so the order that I will be putting these paints in today. I'm going to put in this pigment first. I want this to be, mm, I would like for some of this to end up in the center of my painting. And normally I would put this in last to make that happen, but I don't have a whole lot of it. And so it's not gonna be enough to make it sink. So I'm going to put the pearl in last and allow the pearl to be my center and hopefully um, this pigment will get pushed down by the other paints. Always check your consistency before adding it to your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. Not a step you want to skip. All right, I'm going to pour from up high. I want these paints to sink and churn. Now for the blue, again, checking the consistency, 
pouring from up high. So those pigments are just sitting on top. So I don't know how much of that is going to get pushed down. Hopefully some of it will end up in my pour and not all get spun off. Again, up high. And now I'm gonna take some of the blue that I had left and just go over top. Okay, I'm going to place my little contraption in the center. Do my best to actually make sure it's centered. Oh, are we gonna have that issue today? Okay, I think this is centered. Here's what the cup's looking like. Definitely the abalone sitting on top looks like abalone. All right, so I am going to pour it in a spiral because I want there to be some even distribution of these colors, but I'm not going to pour faster than this vessel can handle. In other words, I don't want it spilling over the top. Don't talk much during this part. It requires concentration. I'm just trying my best to stay in the center. And keep my spinning even. Okay, here comes the pearl, sweet. The last color that went in my cup, made it to the bottom of the cup, hoping that it picked up some of that pigment. Okay, I'm going to go for more of a flower-like center, which I get by alternating the direction of my spiral. Gives a lovely rosette effect. Uh, well, let me fix that. Points off on the dismount. hate when that happens. All right, well, hopefully that'll fix it. Okay, now the question is, do I want the little lines to be coming out? I can lift it now and it's going to maintain that center a lot better, but 
I kind of liked it when the lines were coming out a bit, so I'm going to give it a bit of a spin. That's going to help pull some of what is still left in that center. I'm going to shift my canvas in this direction because this side is moving the slowest. I want that to spin out evenly. Okay, so you can see some of what is still in the center there, which is my latest color, is kind of leaking out. That's what I want. It looks to be the pigment, so yay. I will get some of that pigment in there. I'm gonna pop some of these bubbles. sits more cells will pop up and if I am patient when I stretch this those cells will get bigger so the pearl is here in the center and I see some of it trying to come up through here in this area I would definitely like for some more of that to come out. I'm gonna give this another twirl. Actually, let me uh, recenter. This side is coming off slower than the other, so I'm going to let that side have its moment in the sun. One more twirl with the contraption, and then I'm going to take it off. going to lift it. So by spinning it while that's still on there you can see I can get some of that what's in the center to come out into these little lines. All right. So this corner needs a little bit of love. Let's see. I'm just going to put a little of my drippings on there. That corner dried up a little bit. This will help cover that edge. When I spin again, I will just do this with all of the corners. Okay, let's give this one more spin. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right, that's it. I'm leaving it alone. Got some cool stuff going on. Some of those pigments are popping up. So they should look pretty cool when they're dry. All right, I'm going to let this sit and do what it's gonna do and then I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. That filled in quite a bit. The um, background color, that Prussian blue, that's going to dry, not Prussian blue, the uh, blue-green. Um, that is going to dry darker than it is right now because the Floetrol lightens it up. But the other colors, the blue and the blue-green that's happening in there, um, they will actually wind up appearing brighter than they do right now because the other color will look darker. That is how that works. You can see some of that shimmer happening. Turned out pretty cool. That will be a lot more evident once it is dried and varnished. There will be little bits of the shimmer peppered in there. You can see where that pearl kind of grabbed onto some stuff and the pigment is grabbing onto a little bit of stuff there. Super cool when that happens. But that is, uh, that's it. Kind of a snowflakey thing happening there. Rosy. It's like a rose, but a snowflake. Kind of a flower. Tons of cells, though. That, that celled up uh, a lot. Filled, it filled the whole canvas. But there it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you are already subscribed, please check out the, uh, the bell next to the subscribe button. You need to click that. If you're not receiving notifications, hello, Bigsby. I will feed you momentarily. Someone heard me talking, woke up, and realized his bowl was empty. <laughs> so... Yes, uh, make sure you click that bell so you're receiving notifications when I put up new content. Check out the description box below for links to my affiliates. Get yourself one of the nifty little flower makers from the Paint Pour Store, Deco Art, Fluid Art Company. Lots of coupon codes in there, so make sure you check that out. And uh, also in the description box, you will find a link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. You'll also find the link to our Facebook group. Join us there, post your masterpieces. It's called Go Make Some Art. You might have heard me say that once or twice. So check us out on the Facebook. A good time is had by most. It is the uh, interwebs after all. All right. I can't wait to see how this looks dry because there's a lot of secret bling happening, I think. That will look a lot more evident later. But that's it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.